Indie Beacon Radio with host B. Allen Bourgeois. Welcome to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. You can send questions for each show on Twitter using the hashtag Indie Beacon. Now sit back and enjoy learning about our guest for this show. And welcome to another episode of the Indie Beacon Show. This is your host, B. Allen Bourgeois, and I have with me Miss Dana Wayne who has won a few awards, um, which we'll get into. Welcome, Dana. How are you? I'm great. Thank you, Alan. I'm delighted to be here this evening. It's always a pleasure to have you. So we're going to start off with the most basic question. What got you into writing? Oh, my gosh. I have always wanted to write ever since I was little. I can remember as a child sitting in my dad's lap while he read uh, passages from this stack of uh, westerns, paperback westerns he had by his chair. And that's really where I kind of became fascinated with the written word. I was just amazed that people could paint a picture with words so vivid I could see it in my head. So I said, you know, I want to do that. And that's that's pretty much where it started. I've always wanted to do it and finally got to where I could. So, okay, good question. Um, Obviously, you were young when you wanted to start writing and mm -hmm. stuff. So what was the delay in getting going? Life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, you know, you have all these uh, dreams and aspirations, and then life says, okay, just kind of hang on to that idea. Let's, we got to do this first. So I, over the years, I did a lot of things. I did some uh, stories for anthologies for writers groups. I did some newspaper articles for our local newspaper and things like that. But it wasn't until I actually retired in late 2013 that I was able to start really getting serious about writing a book, which is what I've always wanted to do. And so your first book was Secrets of the Heart. Yes. Um, which not only won an award, but also won a lot of praise and, and good ratings and stuff. I, I was just over the moon with that first book. Uh, you know, anytime you, you do something like that, you know, it's there's this little part of you that's afraid to, you know, to put it out there for the world to see. And then the, the feedback on it was so positive. Well, you know, that was just a shot in the arm that, you needed to to go to the next one it's it's won a couple of awards it was nominated for several awards it's received numerous five-star reviews and so that just kind of put me on the path and here i am and, and to the benefit of life getting in the way all your season experience allowed you that's, to that's it i mean you you write uh, everything that's happened to you in your life somehow gets reflected in your writing. You may not realize it at the time, but uh, there was one in Secrets of the Heart, there was a, a, an emotional scene in it that uh, as I start, I actually really hadn't planned it to go that way, but you know how the story sometimes takes over, and then I started writing it, and it was like I was reliving something that, that happened, had to do with uh, someone dying, and, and you kind of channel that energy and those feelings while you're writing the the scene and you know whether it's happy or sad or funny or you know off the wall it uh, everything that's happened to you in your life will somehow find its way into your stories so let's talk about your story secrets of the heart give the audience a little clue of what's it about secrets of the heart is the story it's a it's a heartwarming story about second chances and healing and the the tremendous power of unconditional love. Uh, the heroine, Tori Morgan, has suffered a, a tragedy in her life and she's trying to regroup and trying to get refocused again. So in a desperate move to get away from everything that reminds her of her past life, she takes a job on a ranch in Montana. And when she gets there, she discovers that she has to pretend to be the fiance of her handsome boss because she's a hospice nurse and his mother is her patient. And the mother thinks that 
that's what she is because of a of a passing comment that his sister made. So she gets there, and all of a sudden, you know, instead of being a nurse, she's going to be a nurse, and she's going to be uh, his fiance. And then there's a uh, his nephew that he has custody uh, guardianship of is also there. So it's a uh, it's gets real tangled up real quick, but then it all works out. <laughs> Now, um, second chances, if I remember correctly, is somewhat of a theme that runs through most of your books. It is. It is. It's you know, it's 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 strong women who have something happen that makes them take a step back and say, "Okay, let me take a deep breath. I need to regroup. What am I going to do with my life?" And it's all about it's all about second chances, pretty much. So, how does that play into mail order groom? Mail order groom is that's one of those stories that um, just kind of happened. Actually, I was at a writers' meeting in Tyler, and uh, some ladies was at the table were talking, and one of them was talking about she had a new mail order uh, bride series coming out, and Caleb Pertle was there, and he goes, "Why is it always a mail order bride? Why is it never a mail order groom?" And I went, "You know." Why not? So I got out my iPad, did a quick search on Amazon, found, you know, virtually nothing with mail order grooms in it. So by the time I got home that evening, I had the whole story plotted in my head. <laughs> and it was the fastest book I ever wrote, start to finish, eight months. <laughs> did you give credit? Um, to oh, get, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Like being a character or anything? Uh, no, I just gave him the, the, the kudos in the beginning for giving me the idea. And, um, but yeah, it, that was, that was a pretty unique and it's, and it's not really a second chance story. Uh, Emma is almost 26. She's a rancher's daughter in Texas in 1878. And her father thinks he's dying and wants her married before he dies so she won't be alone. Well, she wants nothing to do with any of the locals, so he places an ad for her, and that starts it all. <laughs> and then the, 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 the love interest in it is actually their temporary foreman. You know, he sees all this going on and how it's affecting her, and so, you know, he's at the, his... He needs the second chance in this one. And so he said, you know, Miss Emma, have I got a deal for you? <laughs> so, <laughs> and a marriage of convenience is only the beginning. So we don't want to give too much away there. No, no. All right. And so Whispers on the Wind. Tell us about that one. Whispers on the Wind was my first attempt at a romantic suspense. And in this, there's two, the two leads in it are very strong characters that are neither are looking for a relationship but they just kind of get thrown together by circumstances and it actually came to me in a dream one night because I was I dreamed that this guy was hearing a voice that was talking to him and he didn't know where the voice was coming from and so I woke up at like 3 30 in the morning and you know how it is as a writer you know you get these what ifs that pop into your head and it won't leave you alone until you do something with it so the, you know here's this guy that's hearing a voice and telling him that you know you have to do something you got to stop this and I'm like well who stop what and why and so I laid there and I turned over and couldn't go back to sleep got up, turned on my computer, and just said, okay, brain, what is on your mind? And so I typed for two hours and went back to bed. <laughs> and then it stayed in my to-be-written file until I finished. This was while I was doing Mail Order Groom. So um, when I finished Mail Order Groom, then I pulled it out and dusted it off and said, Okay, now where are we going with this? But it's a romantic suspense. It has a, a ghost in it that helps the sheriff solve a murder. Cool. Well, this is actually a good spot for us to stop. Let our sponsors do their thing, and we'll be right back. Do you send book sales to a company that takes most of your money? Want to earn more money from your book sales? Do you want a bookstore that supports you? Introducing a new bookstore for indie authors and small press, B4R.store. Earn up to 80% of your book sales and learn how to market yourself, B4R.store. 
Join us for the 6th Annual Authors Marketing Event in Granbury, Texas on July 23rd to the 25th, 2021, where authors share ideas and learn from the professionals over a two-day weekend. Receive your book marketing certification from the only organization in the world that has been doing it for five years, Authors Marketing Guild, a membership-based organization that supports authors from around the world. Learn more at ame.authorsmarketingguild.com. Sponsored by IndieLector.store, a bookstore that pays authors their fair share. Hello, I am the author and poet Denise Bryson. I am the author of The Things That Cross My Mind, Love's Reality, both in book and audio form. I am also noted as one of the best poets of 2011. I have two new projects coming up. One is the Blinky series, where Blinky tells us all about our coins and our bills for our children. I also have a book coming out called Say Ye. It's quotes from Denise Bryson. Just inspirational and that will help you along the way. Welcome back to Indie Beacon Radio. Don't forget to like us, follow us, or subscribe to one of our many channels. Now, here is your host for today's show. And welcome back. This is your host, Beyond Bourgeois. We are Indie Beacon Show. And we have Dana Wayne with us. We've been talking about her books. Um, so far, we've talked about Secrets of the Heart, Mail Order Groom, and Whispers on the Wind. So before we get into Chasing Hope, you mentioned something in the last one, which most of the authors I talked to all agree about, and that's the talking voices. Oh, yeah. Um, whether they're the characters that you're working on or characters that want to be worked on. Mm -hmm. um, so have you been able to put a lot of files in, in your PC to store one? Oh, my gosh. You should see my to-be-written file. There is, a, oh, there's Lizzie's story. There's Jesse's story. There's Untitled Western. There's a, a Who Done It. You know, it's just, I just give them a name and I put them in that folder. And, and that, they're actually great, too, for the dreaded writer's block. You know, if uh, uh, you get to that point sometime where you, and because I'm a pantser, I don't plot or outline, you know, I have written myself into a corner more times than I can, <laughs> can name. And so to get out of that, you know, you just need to step back away from it totally. And so you want to do something you know, different. Uh, I'll write poems. I'll dig out my to be written files and just go down the list. Oh, I remember that. Oh, yeah, this is cool. And um, recently, I guess it was maybe a month ago, I had another one of those dreams that, you know, this, I see this guy on a horse that's standing over a gully and he's, you know, he's angry and he's sad. And so I wake up and it's like, okay, why is he angry? Why is he sad? And so I came in here, turned my computer on, wrote the first chapter of uh, another contemporary and just go with it and see what happens. <laughs> Which actually brings up a good question because you mentioned the writer's block as you're working on other projects. And when you step away to do these other to-do items, does that help spark that oh yeah back to the story give you an idea to work with it it does it you'd be surprised how like typing on jake's story will somewhere in the back of my mind there's still beulah's story or jesse's story or whatever it is that i'm working on it's still back there you know mulling over and then a, an idea will come to me or a thought and then i'll sit there okay i could do this i could do that okay i got it and then you go on to something else and then i also do uh crafts i, I like to make things and so that to me is a real um break if you will because you're not having to think of words you've got something manual that you're doing you're building this you know diorama type thing and uh, it's totally different from writing and that really helps me to try to refocus again and uh, writer's block is a it can be a killer sometimes you know you, it's easy to get discouraged when you you know get to the point where you can't go forward or you've written yourself <laughs> into this corner and you're like I didn't mean for it to go there so then you got to back up and say okay where did I get off track okay here it is this is where I need to start over what needs to happen next to make it right 
I understand that. So yeah. the last book we haven't talked about, Chasing Hope. Tell us mm -hmm. a little bit about that one. Chasing Hope is uh, another second chance story. It's a heartwarming small town uh, trope about a, a wounded uh, we a veteran and a single mom and a precocious seven-year-old who plays matchmaker. Uh, Max is a, a veteran who was uh, severely injured and he's been in rehab and all for about 16, 18 months at the point the story happens. He's dealing with PTSD and we touch on that in the story uh, but it's more on how Max was able to get past what happened with the help of, you know, the the counselors and people that he worked with. He was able to reach out to people to help him and to help him move forward with his life. And that's that's more how that part is dealt with. But it does talk a little bit about PTSD and, and the effects on people. And, you know, mainly it's military, but it could be anybody. You know, any traumatic event in your life can end up with, uh, you can end up with PTSD. But it's a story, and it's, it's um, everybody that's read it says it needs to be a Hallmark movie. So, um, you know, that's, that's my next thing, is I need to find somebody to make that a Hallmark movie. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering about that, because it was sounding exactly like a movie. So. Oh, it is. It's, it's a Hallmark movie down to the mushy tear jerker ending you know happy tears but yeah it's it's hallmark all the way <laughs> so then that leaves your newest book that you're working on and you hope to have finished hopefully by the end of the year um unveiling beulah so tell us about that unveiling beulah is a, a little different this also is set in texas in the late uh, i think it's 1879 and beulah is um 29, almost 30. She's uh, the daughter of an affluent uh, mercantile owner from New York who suffered an accident early in life that disfigured her face. Well, in her circle of acquaintances, appearances was everything. And because of her disfigurement, she was basically kind of shunned her whole life and kind of put off to the side. And have it not been for her grandmother, she probably wouldn't have turned out as strong a person as she is. And so at the ripe old age of 29, she finally meets a guy that turns out, you know, all he wanted was her money. So she says, you know, I don't need this. And she buys a little mercantile in Bakersville, Texas, and moves there. And the story goes from there. She's very much, a, she's a very strong independent woman with very firm ideas about right and wrong. I'll just so say that. Out of all these stories that you've written, what would you say, well, clearly all the women are strong, mm -hmm. um, but what is the favorite characteristic you like to write about? I think it, it's it's the the ability of not just the women, but the men too, that to you know kind of pull yourself up by your bootstraps sometimes you know the uh the old saying about when life gives you lemons and make lemonade type app, uh, approach you know you can do you can get past anything or pretty much anything if you have the the desire the determination and the necessary support system in place you know everybody doesn't have that but what i like to show is that with those items or those uh, things in place you can you can move past pretty much anything and and succeed so with that in mind you started writing in 2013 mm -hmm. um you have five books basically done mm -hmm. and over mm -hmm. a seven-year period so what would you say is your normal time period to get a book completed and, and published well because i don't write full-time I have, you know, grandchildren and children and other things that I'm involved in, but it it takes me a year to do a book. And I did a cookbook this year too. I I did uh, there's I have a book called uh, uh, Cooking with Family and Friends, and I have that uh, that's only on my website. But um, because I have these other things, it it takes me a year start to finish because you know even after you finish that first draft, you know it's not ready. You've got editors and rewrites and you know all that kind of thing. So it takes me a year start to finish. 
to do one except mail order groom and that one that was the i wouldn't say that's an easy book to write but the words just flowed with it i didn't struggle with it like i i do some of the others sometime we have just about a minute left of this segment so i'm gonna ask the question i ask all my guests what is the one thing you want to give as far as advice for somebody who wants to be um, a writer do it do it don't sit there and say you know i think i can i think i can say i will and just do it just sit down and start even if you think it's garbage you can't edit something that isn't there so just sit down and write and, and to that extent do you think your writing has improved with each edition Oh, definitely, definitely. I can, in fact, I found a, a folder the other day that had some of my uh, original typewritten pages from Secrets of the Heart, and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is passive writing, <laughs> that is that is info dump, that is show, telling versus showing, so yeah, I, it's it's definitely improved, and, and every writer, if you don't improve with every book, you know, you're not doing something right because you could, there's always something to learn and there's always something you can improve on. Great. Well, this is a perfect spot for us to stop and let our sponsors do their thing. We'll be right back. World War II, the Holocaust and a mysterious package arrives in New York from Germany 40 years after the war, involving three families across the oceans. Mystery, intrigue, and correcting the most heinous of wrongs. This is just part of the story Michael Newman tells in his book, Between These Walls. Available in Amazon, Barnes & Noble, or at IndieLector.store. Buy it today and enjoy this thriller of a novel. Authors Marketing Guild is a membership-owned organization designed to help authors succeed and learn how to better market and sell themselves and their books. Join us at AuthorsMarketingGuild.com and receive so many benefits you'll wonder why you didn't join sooner. That's AuthorsMarketingGuild.com. Welcome back to Indie Beacon Radio. Don't forget to like us, follow us, or subscribe to one of our many channels. Now... Here is your host for today's show. And welcome back. This is your host, B. Allen Bourgeois, and I'm with Dana Wayne. We've been talking about her books, but we also want to talk briefly about her podcast that she's just recently started. So tell us a little bit about that and where people can watch it or listen to it currently. Okay. Uh, the podcast is called A Writer's Life. And it's uh, I got the idea a couple of months ago from actually listening to somebody else's podcast and it details a lot of, of just what goes on in my brain you know writers brains tend to work a little different than everybody else but I talk about things like you know where I get my ideas um, some tips for the new writers uh, we talk about I've done something on marketing characterization things like that and I'm starting to do some interviews with other authors and I'm looking to get that where I can get it up on YouTube. Right now, it's just on a podcast, audio podcast, and it's on Spotify and Apple and all of those um, outlets. But it's called A Writer's Life, and uh, I'm, I'm tickled with it. It's, it's, been, it's been fun to do. It was a learning experience. It was just one of those things, you know. It's like, you know, I wonder if I can do this. Okay, hmm. Let me research podcasts and get some information. <laughs> and so and then you just do it. <laughs> I fully understand that. We've been doing this show now for five years. And oh, wow. Through the growth of changing it, of the systems and programs, it's always been something new to learn and stuff. Learning how to get onto Amazon TV mm -hmm. and YouTube, mm -hmm. challenge after challenge. So it's been worth it, though. It's good. It's good, as you said, to help fellow authors get the word out there and stuff. So, yeah. Um, so we've talked about your books and your podcast, where can people learn more about you? A website, Facebook, social media, tell us all of that. 
I am on, I have a website, DanaWayne.com, and uh, I'm also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know, all of those, and it's uh, DanaWayne423, and uh, all my books are available on my website. They're also on, you know, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all the regular places. They're, on, they're also on the Indie Lecture Store. Now, that's called Books to Read Now. No, is that B4R. right? Books? B4R. 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 That's they'll be available there as well, and uh, but pretty much all the the typical outlets, and you can always reach out to me through my website for an email. Uh, if you got a question, if you got an idea for a podcast, or if you want to be on my podcast, just drop me an email through my website, and we'll we'll talk about it. Well, I know through Indie Lecter and B4R, you autograph books that people purchase from there, and I can mm -hmm. they do that on your website as well. Yes, they do. I do. I have a there's, there's there's a spot that if you want to have your book personalized or autographed, you just click the button and put what you want on it, and we'll get it to you. Great. And again, your podcast can be found on pretty much any of the major podcast systems. Correct. It's called A Writer's Life, and it's on Spotify, Breaker, um, and uh, iBook. Uh, what is it? The iPod. All of those. Okay. So we have just a few seconds left. Any words, anything you'd like to share before we leave? Nope. I'm a writer. I love it. I love words. My husband says I must because I use so many of them all the time. But, <laughs> but I love what I do, and I love hearing from fans that like what I read. And, you know, every every Atta Girl that comes through just propels me on to the next one. And speaking of the next one, um, after Unveiling Beulah is done, which as you're hoping you'll have it wrapped up and, and out at the end of the year, mm -hmm. what voices have been speaking the loudest to be heard? I actually have another romantic suspense that I was working on before Beulah. And uh, Beulah wouldn't leave me alone, so I had to put this other romantic suspense down. So I'm well over halfway through it, so it'll be early next year. Great. And it, it's about a serial killer, uh -oh. <laughs> from 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 uh, you know mail order grooms to serial killer. So, <laughs> has the story ideas come to you? You, you just go. You with just got to go with it. Right. You just got to go with it. <laughs> well, I want to thank you very much, Dana, for being with us, and we wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much, Alan. I appreciate it. Thank you for listening to Indie Beacon Radio, where creative souls can find help in marketing their creations. To learn more about Indie Beacon services, to be a guest on the show, or to advertise on our show, please visit our website. Indie Beacon Radio with the host, B. Alan Bourgeois. Indie Beacon Radio is produced by B. Alan Bourgeois, Fathers Mark and Guild LLC, copyright 2020. Voiceover by Randy James, Lydia Bello, and B. Alan Bourgeois. To be a sponsor of the show or for more information, please email us at info at authorsmarketingguild.com. To be interviewed for the show, please complete the form at radio.authorsmarketingguild.com. Music always rejoiced by Ramcord.